Bueno, mi gente, ¿cómo está? Hope everything is okay. Just reflecting, going back in time when um, I was chilling, man, in my in my cube, and I was thinking about C73 and how I got hooked up and handcuffed and taken to HDM, you know? And I was thinking of all the moves that that took me to 8 Upper, and then they moved all of us to 12 Dome and stuff like that, and how I would have to quail, you know, some things that were going on with the, with the association and people getting out of control. And, you know, it takes a leader. It takes a real leader to control a population of people in your surroundings. And that's what I had to do. You know, I had to run the phones, give people time on the phones and stuff like that. And um, I remember this brother. I don't know if he's still around. And I hope he is. He was cool. His, his name was uh, Caballon, you know? Cool brother. Dominican dude, you know, but I, I, you know, I was like checking him out, man, but he was, like I said, he was a cool dude, man, he's, uh, they told me that he went back to DR, you know, and, um, I said, yeah, man, I'm glad that he, I'm glad he went back to DR because he was facing a homicide charge, you know, they said, um, that he had done somebody. And I'm joking. I was joking with him, and I said, yo, you here on a body? He said, yeah, but I didn't do it. I said, I believe you. <laughs> he started laughing. I said, what What they do, pay you $20, man, to watch the body, man, and then they came and arrest you? And he just was laughing, laughing, laughing. He said, you too much, man. Too, and he would say, tu está bien pasado, tu está bien pasado. And I said, wow, man. You know, but like I say, he was a cool brother, man. And um, he even asked me if I can give him some time on the phone. I said, yeah, bro, that's not my phone, you know. I'm just making sure that everybody gets on there, you know. So um, his slot was, uh, I think, from 9 to 11. And he said, oh, I got a hamper store and all that. I said, bro, I don't care. You know, I'm not here. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I was thinking of all that. Then, I thought about when, um, in bed, when I came out the box and, 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 uh, and the, the, the uh, sergeant, I think the sergeant asked me some questions. You know, because they were putting, getting ready to put me in housing. He asked me, he said, uh, what gang was I in any gang? And I said, no, I'm not in no gang. I, to be honest, I wasn't in no gang because I decided to leave the gang. You see what I'm saying? So he told me, he, then he told me about this guy. And I'm going to call him with a pain guy because I don't want to give his name. But he had told them that I tried to kill him. And that's the reason it hit me. That's the reason why they took me out of 12 Dorm, handcuffed me and took me. And I did see him and I saw the guy that they're talking about, he was with me on the boat. And then, uh, then when he found out, you know, people when they find out that you're very intelligent and you know what to do, stuff like that, they, they'll cross you quick. And he had put a green light on somebody, and uh, I think he probably thought about, yo, this guy is running, the, he's running C-73. He's probably going to get me for what I did, you know, that kind of thing. And that's why, you know, he threw my name in there. That's why I don't trust nobody, 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 you know, because of, all, because of that, 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 that crap. So anyway... Uh, 
daughter Bonnie said, wow, you know. And right around that time, we were supposed to, there was supposed to be a strike. And I said, I told him, I said, man, they forget about a strike, man. You know, that's just going to cause more problems. And I ain't got time for that, man. I'm getting ready to go up north. You know, why you going to, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, then I thought about going to, uh, from HDM, I was there for a hot minute. And um, I think I was there like maybe four or five days. And after the, the, the four or five days, I, um, I um, was shipped to C-74. So when I got to C-74, that was a war zone. I think I was in two, two main. I think they called it the House of Pain. <laughs> They put me in a room. I couldn't believe it. They put me in, in the cell. It seemed like they just got somebody out of it. The whole wall was bloody. Bloodied up. I'm looking at the wall. And I'm going, oh, here we go again. So, at the same time, I'm, you know, looking, checking things out. So there was a guy right across from me, and he kept looking at me, and then he asked me a question. I think he said, uh, where did I come from? And I said, well, well, you know, I was in C-73, and that's, you know, they arrested me and brought me to HDM, and then from HDM I'm here, you know? And uh, I said, but... I'm glad they did because I already had copped out, man, you know. And then he said, <clears throat> he asked me point blank, are you a brother? In Spanish, put a manito. And I said, si, sí, por qué? He said, de corazón, I said, de corazón. And then uh, he told me his name. Uh, his name was Revenge. You know, and I told him I'm uh, 13, Santo Trece. And um, we got we got along real good. Then he was he told me he said, look, you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be leaving pretty soon, man. You know, and behind me and him having that conversation, you know, that I ran I ran um, C73 um, cell side and dorm side, and he was impressed, you know. And I guess he probably threw some, you know, fine, because you don't just take somebody under your wing to run stuff when you're getting ready to get out of there. So the, the thing was, he probably asked a couple of people, he probably told him, yo, that brother's on point. Because um, I would say ooh, about maybe three or four days later, we go to the yard, and he told me, yo, I want you to run this man, because I'm out. I said, what? I said, yeah, said, man, you, you, you and my boy, Gano, man, you guys have some weird ways of, you know, I said, yeah, but, you know, you cool like that. So anyway, he came out to the pueblo, and he told all the manitos that were sitting around waiting for, it's called Sentid, you know, uh, I forgot how to say it in English. But anyways, so he came out, and he met, you know, he introduced me to the pueblo, and then he said, um, I just want you to know that uh, I'm leaving, but this brother has a lot of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and I want him to run C, uh, C-74. And everybody said, de corazón, from the heart, you know? And I ran it for about, I think I was there like about two weeks. And the two weeks I was there, man, it was crazy. It was, when I say it was crazy, it was crazy. They even had uh, uh, Tupac was in there. He was uh, he was there, but he I hardly ever saw him, and I probably saw him once, you know. But he um, I think I think he would just come out to to go to chow or whatever the case may be. But the house he was in, I remember they uh, they tried to uh, attack my house. Oh, actually, they were trying to attack me. 
you know, and that was uh, the Bloods, because they knew that um, and somebody told him, yo, he's a, he's a head, you know, <clears throat> and it so happened that I went, we went to channel one day, and all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Can you believe my so-called manitos, punk asses? They were frozen. They didn't move. They didn't do anything. You know who stood there and had my back? Latin Kings. And a couple of, uh, uh, I think they were, I think they were God bodies, five percenters. They, they were like, you ain't messing with this brother. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the so-called nietas, and they like, and I said to myself, man, I gotta, I don't want to. I'm out of this, man. Your own people are going to abandon you? Get out of here. But, you know, and I even told, I forgot the brother's name, man. Uh, Latin King, man. I said, man, thanks a lot, bro. I said, nah, man, do it a three more. Your cousin, man. You know, we got to look out for you, man. You know, and we heard good things about you anyway, man. You ran all them clowns out of C-73 to no facility. You don't got them. Yeah, man, Joe, you know about that? He said, yeah, man, you know? So anyways, I, you know, all this was hitting me. And um, then there was another time I remember um, before I hit C-74 that I was in C-73. It was around Christmas time. And uh, my man had some people bring some material. And uh, gave, gave me a ball like this. Oh, Tegada, Terra. I said, yo, that's for you, brother. For what? Yo, I'm serious, true story. I I told my boy, I said, go, go to each bed and ask them what do they get high on. <clears throat> so, he, that's what he did. And then he told me, like, maybe... About seven or eight we got high on heroin, you know. Even a couple of so called Muslims. So, you know, I went, I said, make sure that it, they all get a piece of this. Let me tell you something. They, he went, boom, 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 he did what he had to do. And um, I would say, like, maybe 15 minutes later, they were all high, throwing up, running to the bathroom, this, that, and the other. And then I caught, I caught a, a, a Muslim brother, and he had his kufi sideways, man. And I said, yo, Ak. Yo, Ak. And he looked up and said, yeah, like this, look, like, yeah, man. I said, bro, don't do that, man. You're going to blow up the spot, man. What's wrong with you, man? Oh, I said, man, not only that, I take off the goofy, you know, and then he, and then, uh, he did, he told the other, I said, tell the other brothers, man, I don't want nobody, I don't want no brothers getting high, man, with no goofy on, man, that's disrespectful, you know, he did that, and, you know, these are things that, you know, and, um, <clears throat> Then one night, one day, this guy, we were having a little meeting. He kept watching, like if he was a, a spy or something. He kept watching, looking, watching, looking. So my boy, um, Pantero, Indio Pan, yeah, Indio, I think his name was Indio Pantero. He told me, Oye, Santo, I, I, I don't like the way this guy is looking. I said, well, tell him, man, stop looking, man. Go over there. If you feel like that, go over there and tell him. Next thing you know, they fucking, bah, bah, bah. You know, Indio had a good, he had some, one thing about Boricos from Puerto Rico, man, they got some hellified hand skills. You know, they don't need no, 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 uh, tool or, you know, tool or gadget or whatever you want to call it, you know, a ratchet, you know. They good with this shit, man, you know. And uh, he fought this African-American dude, man, like, he was real tall, man, and Indio was like, 
They won't buy my men. So they broke it up. They took the guy out. <clears throat> they took the guy out. They moved him. Can you believe some idiot lied and said that he, that that dude had cut me and all that? That was a lie. Believe me, uh, Captain Pitt came by and told me, he, he said, no, um, you know, brother, man, is everywhere we move him, he's getting cut by your people, man. You got to do something. You got to talk to him. I said, well, take me from house to house. Then I'll let everybody know and pass the word, man, not to touch that guy. Sure enough, he did. You know, <laughs> Pitt was cool like that, man, you know. And every house I would go, I'd see my money. Oh, they're going to fall. You know, it's funny. And then, uh, again, like I said, you know, took me out of there. Uh, one time, I would say one time there was a kid, man, and I was ready. If he would have came in there, I would have done him. He looked like he was going to try to stab me in my sleep. He kept watching. I might have my eye open because I... I I normally would wake up like around four in the morning, you know. And I was sitting there just thinking, and I noticed he was in front of my door. The gate was open. And he just like contemplating, should I attack? Should I do this? Should I? So I, one moment I told him, yo. He said, huh? I said, what's up, man? What's up? He said, oh no, I want to know if you're going to go to if you're going to go to town. And I said, uh. Yeah, I'm going to go to town. And they said, oh, okay, okay. Because I wasn't sure whether to wake you up or not. You're full of crap, you know. And um, that was like a close call. Then there was another guy who was a nieta, a blood, nieta blood. And I had to pull his coat and tell him, yo, listen, I want to tell you like it is, man. Whether I'm here or not, man. And I know who you are, man, so don't play yourself, you know. His name was Panama. I said, don't play yourself, man. I definitely will put you on check real quick, man, if, you, if any of my money could get cut because of you. You know, I said, you've been treated right, man. No, man, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know what, the, you know what I'm talking about, fight. You know what I'm talking about, man. You know? And then he said, oh, man. I don't know whatever happened to that brother. Anyways, after that, man, you know, name was called out this and the other. You know, I had to go. Uh, I'm wrong. It's so funny because I, I think it was. This brother named Danny, another brother named Mason. I forgot the other brother's name, but we all went together. <clears throat> Danny had a toupee. And uh, they made him take the toupee off before he went up north. You, know? <laughs> you can hear the bell, bell call. <laughs> you know, they had to send it back home. You know, I said, damn, bro, I didn't know you, I didn't know that you was born. And he said, he laughed, you know. And then I said, you were better off putting a condom over your head. Oh, everybody started rolling, man. And with that, man, listen, um, I'll get back to you, man. I got a lot, a lot of nice stories to, to tell. You know, some are, some are, some are pretty cool, some, you know, kind of heavy duty. All right, peace out, be safe, and save a kid's life.